What is this? I keep Every seeing this. The fitness YouTuber that went clinically insane? What the f*** is this? At his peak was being discussed by Ethan Klein and Hila from H3 Productions. However, as the years roll by and Connor Murphy's channel faded into irrelevance, his mental state would sadly decline alongside it. This video will cover that tragic misinformation. Experience theory you ever know is 100% true. The, the government is reptilian overlords. Joe Rogan is in on it. Elon Musk is in on it. Tiger Woods is in on it. You can check my story. I've been messaging them. I am forgetting and knowing that is how I created the plan. I can't do the plan if I knew it the whole time because I'd be cracking up. So I make myself forget. I am infinitely intelligent so I can make myself forget. Connor Murphy once had a reputation as an extroverted, disciplined go-getter whose athleticism easily rivaled other top-tier fitness influencers. However, as the years rolled by and Connor's channel faded into to irrelevance, his mental state would sadly decline alongside it. I used to be so happy when I was a kid. This is called Tom's Market. I love this place because the Gospel of Thomas is where it's at. See, the people who wrote the Bible were. Or... I was actually put into a psych ward for over two weeks. When in the psych ward, he said he was God. He was offered antipsychotic medication. Every emotion in me is just rapid fire. The whole universe is me. I am consciousness. I know that mom has a stronger belief in heaven than you, dad. I, it's, it's an essence. You can feel it. You can feel God within someone. Now, this, ladies and gentlemen, is a man who has officially lost his mind. Break down Psych Ward's strange podcasts and the belief that he had become God were all captured right here on the YouTube platform with his path to insanity beginning on the 9th of January 2016 when Connor Murphy would post his very first video titled Connor Murphy Natural Body Transformation. The video began by stating that quote, when he was younger he wasn't really the coolest kid in his class before going on to show numerous photos of his skinny younger self. This would all change when he began to hit the weight room at the age of 13, building a pretty reasonable physique in the four years that followed. However, uh, this had become even more impressive by his 21st birthday, having built his body to the point where he could stand out as a fitness YouTuber on the platform. He began by posting simple workout and nutrition guides in which it was clear that Connor had a genuine desire for improving the lives of his viewers. It's to help you look as impressive as you possibly can for your next Instagram picture or YouTube video. Everyone wants to look good. I'm gonna help you guys out. These instructional videos were interwoven with basic fitness pranks, such as pretending to be a fitness mannequin in the mall. However, it would be when Connor posted the first video in what would become his Aesthetics on Omegle series that his channel began to explode. The premise of the series was pretty basic. He'd wait to match with females on Omegle before taking his shirt off and simply recording their reaction. Within six months of posting his first Aesthetics on Omegle video, Connor Murphy had passed 100,000 subscribers. However, the most notable part about this video was the information it revealed to Connor. People were interested in watching him take his shirt off in front of girls, spawning a new series of bizarre prank type videos in which he would leave the bedroom and instead look for excuses to take his shirt off in public. There were classics such as Connor Murphy shirtless on the roof of Chipotle, Connor Murphy goes grocery shopping, and who could forget how to impress a girl instantly. So I mean, this dude was so demonstrably fucking hot that it's one of those instances where like, it's almost appropriate, but if you tried this at home, you would go to jail. You know what I mean? Like, literally, he has the mind of a 12-year-old. Bro, I mean, but, like, he is so fucking in such remarkable shape that it's, like, appropriate. It's the one edge case where it's, like, this man is able to do it, but most of you, it, it, no one else will be able to do it. He's just built differently. That's it. Press you in just one second. I get both of your numbers. So when does the timer start? Right now? So here's my phone, you guys can just put your numbers in. The videos were incredibly cringy. However, this was offset to some degree by Connor's self-awareness and likable attitude in the beginning. I really hope you don't think that I'm too much of a douchebag, but even if you do, please subscribe because my view- to Totally different from the other pickup artists. I mean, uh, the, the picking up stuff is cringe. I didn't realize he was doing that. I thought he was just like taking his shirt off. Yeah, I, I don't know. He, he, he's just, he's a good Subscribe dude. ratio is getting absolutely insane. However, even with the likable attitude, without context, the videos were incredibly easy to roast. Individuals such as H3 at True Productions, who was reigning supreme in the commentary genre at the time, uploaded this video titled, My Girl is Leaving Me for This Guy. <laughs> what a fucking so stupid, what, what a stupid fucking title. <laughs> Oh, come on, dude. Ethan. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's awesome. 9.2 million views. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. That's so good. That's so funny. <laughs> My girl is leaving me for this guy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> 
uh <laughs> video titled my girl is leaving me for this guy to an audience of over 9 million so what do you think about connor murphy first thing i think when i look at this guy is that when he's having sex he's watching himself in the mirror <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying and while most youtubers would see this level of criticism as a negative it simply gave connor murphy another opportunity to display his humility ethan klein from h3h3 productions i've honestly been a long time subscriber all of his videos are hilarious including his recent one. My idol, Connor Murphy. I think it's the best one yet. So you guys should totally go check it out. Providing a pathway for Connor Murphy to hit 1 million subscribers only a year and a half after beginning his channel. However, while such a milestone would have been incredibly exciting for Connor Murphy, it seemed to trigger a serious decline in his motivation for making videos as only six months after achieving 1 million subscribers, he disappeared from the platform for over five months. Upon returning, he'd upload only eight videos within the space of a year, less than one per month, with only half of them cracked in the 1 million view mark. As a result, Connor Murphy's average monthly view count began to tumble. He'd go from 20 million views per month at the beginning of 2018 to less than 5 million per month by the beginning of 2019, only 12 months later. In addition to his five month break, his decline in viewership had also been aided by a reduced interest for prank related videos. In 2016 and 2017, his ideas were fresh and on par with the YouTube meta at the time. However, they were certainly feeling a little dated by 2019. As 2020 rolled around, the prank genre had not only become even more more dated, but Connor was facing a new problem. Almost all of his viral ideas required outdoor social interaction with females, which had been halted by US lockdowns, forcing him to return to older video ideas. And I know it has been forever since- Bro, what the fuck? What, what like, what the f Okay. Why? Like, you don't have to just fucking take your shirt. You don't have to just show your titties to women. What the fuck? Even then, it's like Omegle and like taking your shirt off on Omegle, like it's kind of sus. Like, okay, 2017, 2018, like people were just not thinking about it, I guess. Or when it, I probably was still would have been like, that's a little fucked up. You shouldn't do that because you don't know who the fuck, how old they are and shit. But like, that's a sh it's a shtick, dude. I mean, there's got to be something on, on top of that. You can't just like only fucking do that. Since I've made an Omega video, but since it's pretty much the only type of content I can film right now, I figured it was time to do another one. Connor returned to the streets whenever lockdowns were lifted. On 6th Street, thank goodness it is back like the good old days. However, the overall limitation would drop his monthly view count to less than 3 million per month, forcing Connor to try a new career path. With a sane and coherent mind, Connor Murphy made the decision to move to LA in pursuit of becoming an actor. Uh -oh. And while the potential of a new career path was incredibly exciting, this would be the point at which things began to go downhill rapidly. For a while now, he's come under fire for his uh -oh. physique essentially deteriorating. Compared to when he first started YouTube, he's kind of like, doesn't look nearly as good as he when he first started. It looks like he's probably lost about 10 to 15 pounds of muscle. While Connor's physique was still incredibly impressive by average standards, it was becoming increasingly obvious that his body wasn't built to the same standard as it had been in the early days of his channel. Is it just me or is Connor looking a little smaller and less shredded? Not hating, just noticing. Bro, your videos are awesome, but what's wrong with you? You don't look like a bodybuilder. Your abs are disappearing. You don't look shredded. Focus on your physique more, bro, although I enjoy watching your vids. Connor explained the reason for his loss of gains to be body fat percentage. And over the course of the last few months or whatever, I've probably gained like one to two percent body fat. The second thing, man, is lighting. However, others speculated that his weight loss might have been the result of some kind of addiction. I don't look that skinny, do I? Oh man. my god, what the fuck? Dude, he read the YouTube comments, dude. That's it. He read the fucking YouTube comments and he gave himself... Oh no. Maybe you lost... I mean, you're definitely bigger than me, but yeah, I have lost a lot. Well, you weigh less You weigh less than me by a lot now because you've lost mm -hmm. uh, 31, 31 pounds? Something like that, yeah, yeah. These suspicions would be confirmed to some extent when his friend and fellow YouTuber, Patrick Lyons, would upload a video explaining that in early 2020, Connor tried psychedelics for the first time. Oh, Connor no. has taken a substance called ayahuasca. For the first time, he took it about a year ago, and- Oh no, Joe Rogan takes another one, dude. This is why you constantly don't read the deranged gray names. No, bro, it's because he fucking, he, it's because he, it's Joe Rogan, dude. He took the ayahuasca and it fucked his brain up. When he took it a year ago, it is what led to the first period of 
like concerning video content creation on his part uh, related to what he called enlightenment. The mentioned concerning video content began with this video in late 2020 titled Why I Deleted My Old Videos and How to Access Them, in which his audience will witness the first example of Connor giving up his old gym related branding, replacing it with a much more hippie vibe, wearing a hoodie and necklace while standing in front of a damp rainforest poster. Throughout the video, Connor would discuss the many downsides of success in a relatable, articulate and intelligent manner. I reached this point of success the great physique, the girls, the money, and I became depressed. And while his new introspective message might have uh -oh. resonated with some, in the months that followed, it became blatantly obvious that Connor Murphy was diving deeper into what you might call the spirit realm as his ramblings became increasingly incoherent. What the fuck? He looks like Robin Hood. He's dressed. Oh no. Pa Hassan, I hope positivity week has been helpful. The mental said dealing with thousands of negative comments you should be overwhelming, but you take it in stride. Yeah. Because I remember that at the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. I'm sorry. Should not have done that right there. But it's true. Nasty. I know. I'm a nasty bitch. I'm a thirsty thought. Fucking taking a heartwarming message for profit. Disgusting. Um, okay, okay. Uh, all jokes aside, thank you. That's that's nice. Um, no, I mean, dude, straight up, the only reason why I'm I think I'm able to manage this situation uh, decently well is because you know, I got a very supportive fan base. This is why we don't say nice things. Okay, dude, chill. Uh here's the woman at right now. Shut up. Hassan Ivy would make a your mom joke at a funeral. Yeah, at your mom's funeral. Fucking got him. Tony Marie, thank you for the five of the subs. Through deep meditation and consciousness work, you can realize that you can be free of the compulsive nature behind thought. Of course, you will still think, but there won't be any addictive quality. What? I've been calling Hassan a cornball since day one. The day I laugh at his jokes is the day my account is hacked. I got to watch my parking lot get paved today and it was wonderful. Pretty good day. Hell yeah. Bro, she just died? Okay, chill to that thought. You can detach her from your thoughts and be the observer of the thoughts rather than identify with the thoughts. That is probably the biggest addiction of all. At around the same time, Connor would post a picture to his Instagram holding a graduation certificate alongside a caption reading, I am now officially a doctor. That's right, I received an honorary doctorate in spirituality from the Los Angeles Development Church, an institute simply from making a donation. This honorary degree lets me legally use the doctor title in front of my name. I can legally be referred to as Dr. Connor Murphy. His former friend and fellow YouTuber Patrick Lyons, who had originally updated everyone on Connor's ayahuasca use, then went on to explain that Connor's dosage had increased substantially he took that ayahuasca the first time Wait, uh, a year ago, and I don't know where along the lines these- Bro, there's something, I mean, this is like a very serious and very sad moment in the video, but there's something really funny about like gym bros making serious videos, but he's still wearing the tank top. So it's like, like, I can't take you super seriously. Like, I know that the situation at hand is like very serious, right? But you- <laughs> like it's it's like you're still you're still kind of being a gym bro while you're while you're describing it you know what i mean it's just <laughs> he only has tank tops he's either that or shirtless like you don't you don't have like a like you don't have like a sweater that you can put on you know cover it up slut <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> sorry It's his dressy tank. Fellas, who amongst us isn't talking about their friends like rapid decline in mental state with your with your fucking classy tank top? Things happened, but he has increased his frequency of consumption to every two hours. Which would also be reiterated by another friend of Connor called Jane. I asked Connor, how often do you do ayahuasca? And he said, every two hours. Connor's extreme dosage will become apparent when what a channel called Micah fuck? would upload no a video shot. titled- No shot, you went can't do I. What the fuck, was he trying to microdose ayahuasca? You can't even do that, dude. That's not like fucking LSD or acid or some shit. You, what? I don't think you're supposed to do that. That's like one of those things. Even Joe Rogan doesn't say that. Even Joe Rogan would be like, oh, dude, bro, you, you're not supposed to do that. 
OMG clickbaiting someone going schizo. Holy shit. We went to save Connor Murphy, Connor Murphy, the fitness YouTuber who went clinically insane. Yeah, I don't really understand how the fuck he did that. Like, I, I literally do not understand how he did that. I think, I guess it is. A, a lot of times, like, here, here's something. I knew someone that um, had a schizophrenic breakdown, okay? How did it happen? Uh, he, was, he was doing a lot of Adderall, and he was smoking weed, and he had a history of it that he did not know. And 25, around 25 is like when you, you know, you start, if that's like in your history, that's usually when you start having uh, complications like that, okay? And he would like fucking put everybody on text threads, talk about how he's God, all this other stuff, you know what I mean? Like crazy stuff. Um, and, and he, he's fine now, right? This was a couple years back, but, but he had it, he had this history, uh, he, he, that he was unaware of this guy. I mean, this guy, look, ayahuasca, I don't know how the fuck that works. I don't know how the fuck that would happen. Ayahuasca is DMT. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's not like mushrooms. What the fuck? No, 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 no. So this is a normie vanilla jock video about a, this is your brain on drugs vid sussy. No, dude. I think that. There's probably like a couple different factors at play here that this video most likely is not going to dive into. Save Connor Murphy, in which Connor's apartment can be seen in complete and utter disarray, shown similarly in Jane's video. I drove my car to Connor's apartment complex. There were a bunch of boxes and trash bags in front of his door. We went inside his apartment and this is what I saw. The stack of boxes was so huge that it took up half of the apartment and spilled out through the front door. Connor apologized for it being so messy, but said that he hadn't had time to clean because he'd been so busy making content. I've just been so focused on getting up all this content. I just haven't had time to clean. That's why I'm here. So I just started unboxing the mountain of packages and it was a bunch of totally random stuff. Just a few of the things were a Harry Potter invisibility cloak, 12 cans of oxygen, and a cat tower. I asked him if he had a cat and he said no. Before he'd gone to imply that he'd completely given up on his bodybuilding diet. How you been getting all your calories in? Well, I just eat whatever I want now. Later in the video, Connor's mental health problems will be put on full display. <laughs> My name is Stewie, Stewie Griffin and Belle Delphine. You like this? I'm about to eat some vegan macaroni and cheese. Vegan, it's me. Okay, this is sad as fuck, dude. What the fuck? Are they like exploiting their fucking friend's mental illness for... For content like that's this is like hard to i don't want to watch the rest of this okay there were still signs of mental illness I'm, I'm skipping that part that's like you don't need to see a person in their weakest fucking moments you know what i mean like that's jesus fucking christ dude what the fuck dude i the real mental the real mental illness is, is just being a fucking youtuber or a twitch streamer honestly but like holy fuck our friend had a schizophrenic breakdown, gone sexual. Yeah, that's disturbing shit, dude. What the fuck? It clearly wasn't fake. In other videos, Connor appeared more sane. However, there were still some. I can't believe they just like dropped that in there, by the way. That's like, holy fuck. I mean, this video shouldn't have done that either, for the record. Like, <sighs> yes, by weakest moment, I mean, he went vegan. Exactly mental illness such as this video in which he would attempt to pick up girls by telling them that he had become god i am god okay I'm god yeah uh, how, how do you feel about that i mean why do you think you're god interesting so well why do you think that i even exist Connor's God complex would then lead him to produce even stranger videos, such as this one titled Failing to Enlighten My Parents, in which he would sit in a Zoom call rambling incoherently to his mother and father for an hour and a half straight. If you truly had faith and you knew that heaven on earth existed, that's the only thing you'd be searching for. You wouldn't be working, you wouldn't be stressing. All you would be doing is doing everything you can to experience heaven on earth. Accompanying these inco- Oh my god, does he- wait, is he a debate pervert too? Is he like trying to- Oh, that's so sad. His parents are like actually fucking devastated, I think. Is he trying to debate his parents into like saying that like heaven and hell doesn't exist or something? That's what it sounds like. Debating my parents gone spiritual. The unenlightened people not understanding enlightened people. Very common. It killed Jesus. Come on, bro. Coherent ramblings was a complete overhaul of his Instagram from a former aesthetic showground to a psychedelic wasteland. He's starting to wear like costumes and shit, and he's like going around at nighttime doing weird stuff, and he starts posting these uh, 
Mario became enlightened when he realized that he is the pixels. You are living in the matrix. Connor Zad, uh, call me the happy hatter. And he's wearing some costume. In the early days of his channel, Connor had talked about his passion for- The interesting part about this is that like, well, one, he's a content creator and this happens to a lot of people in LA, I think, straight up. Like, like a lot of people come to Los Angeles with like hopes of fame or whatever. And then like when it doesn't happen, they just like start taking, they just start, you know, self-medicating whatever methods, whatever means they have to their hands. Sometimes they already have like an underlying, you know, family history of mental illness or something like that. It's just like a really, um, it's just like a really weird mixture. But then also at the same time, he's over here like, you know, posting shit like he's going to Burning Man. So in LA, that doesn't really, that doesn't really fucking seem all that out of place if you know what i mean like if i there's like people that fucking post like that you know and that you could just be like oh is this like a new realm of content for him or is this just like chatters is what happens when you raw dog your pre-workout fuck no dude jack 3d not being taken off the shelves would have saved him i was at my best when i was taking jack 3d the real shit though god those were the fucking days dude Remembering hydroxycut? No. You just buy meth, you know, it's not the same. Drug-induced schizophrenia, it just happens to some people if you have a predisposition to mental illness and can increase your chances. I think, yeah. It contained amphetamines? Wait, Jack 3D had amphetamines in it? No, it didn't. You're such a liar. Dude, when I was in fucking college, dude, holy shit. That 2010, that era... Dude, the 2010 Jack 3D era was fucking bananas. I don't know how the fuck that was legal. Well, guess what? It literally was not, actually. It was illegal. It was made illegal because of the cowardly nanny state and the fucking libtard Democrats. It had one, three DMAA in it. You have to buy that stuff special now. Dimethylalamine. Oh, that's what it was? That's the good stuff? You ain't even old enough to remember that Thermadrine? The real hydroxycut, you were a kid when they outlawed that shit? Yeah, I know. I heard, I heard stories about it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, they took fucking real hydroxycut, and then some people started dying. Like, oh, wow. Oh, and then they, they switched it over to, like, ephedrine, right? And then, and then people started dying from that, too. It's like, I'm sorry that you have a weak constitution, okay? I'm built differently. I would do NO Explode or whatever was pre-workout, and it literally felt like actual cocaine for golf my two main more serious sports were basketball and golf i played those both in high school and i play golf in college right now which would be reignited in the strangest way after he had become enlightened as explained by derek from more plates more dates i look at my dms and i'm in this weird group and it's called like connor's like enlightened cult or something the members of this group it's like connor me Bro, this reminds me exactly of my friend from college that literally this happened to where he was just like having a schizophrenic uh like breakdown and and like adding a whole bunch of random people into a fucking text chat to just be like say the most crazy stuff tiger woods the pga tour team star like some like the weirdest smorgasbord combination of individuals ever and connor is just like posting weird voice messages in his matthew mcconaughey accent and i'm like like, what are we doing here, dude? Like, what is going on? And presumably his uh, enlightenment sort of led him towards the realization that he was going to win uh, a major golf tournament professionally, as far as I- I don't like bang energy drink. Maybe it's because I'm 30 years old, but like when I drink it, it like hurts my face. <laughs> One of the suppies in bang, like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just like, it's gross. It tastes gross. I don't like bang. I, I feel like it poisons me when I drink it. And I've I've taken a fuck look. I mean, dude, I I guzzle caffeine all fucking day. Um, so uh, you know, bang supports Trump, by the way. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about that. Every everyone who's rich owns every company and they're all fucking Republican. I understand. In the same video, Derek would go on to explain that Connor had gone so far off the rails that he began posting his saved passwords to his public Instagram. Him showing every single password on his phone that is saved, like every single account he has and the email associated with it. So like Bank of America, Amazon, even his Bang Energy password, apparently. Derek would then host a podcast talking about Connor Murphy with another YouTuber who would state that his actions seemed indicative of schizophrenia. That is psychotic behavior. Yeah. 
Like yeah. that is very indicative of somebody with lingering mental instabilities, uh, such as a family history of schizophrenia. And while it didn't seem like things could possibly get any worse, why are they laughing? They about dude, what the fuck? Why are they not like find upset? Out that with every high, there's an equivalent low. After he'd upload a video simply titled "Goodbye." In this video, Connor would explain that he felt as though he was going insane, being at his quote mental breaking point. What is happening? I've gone literally mentally insane. Seven taking him to a psych ward where he would remain for two weeks. In the process, he'd remain in contact with his best friend, who'd state that even after being put in a mental hospital, Connor was unable to stop talking about his spiritual enlightenment. So Connor spent two weeks in a psych ward and I called him every few days, rather he called me and we talked- Bro, this is the typical YouTuber, like we're gonna discuss something serious uh, thing, by the way. Like this is the framing. You sit on the couch, you're right in the middle of this fucking big couch. You know, it's time to talk about something serious. The sofa setup. Like, this is the same setup that you use when, you know, you've like, you've been outed as like a sexual assaulter or something. This is the same setup you use when you come out. This is the same setup that you use when you're like, you know what I mean? That's why I respect Sienna Miller or whatever the fuck her name is. Like, at least she's, at least she was like, I'm not even apologizing. When Sienna, when Sienna Miller was like, or Sienna May, not Miller, was like, I'm not even apologizing. I'm going to dance. I'm going to dance to I've kissed a thousand guys for doing assault. This is some very meta content. Sienna May, yeah. Talked every few days and he was able to get to a point where he was able to hold a normal conversation and speak normally. But yet one thing remained the same. The one thing that stayed the same was he just didn't want to talk about anything other than his enlightenment and his awakenment. It seemed to be the only thing that mattered to him. After being let out of At the- At least he's not wearing a tank top in this one. Like, homie put the sleeves on. You know this shit's serious. You know what I mean? He was like, listen, uh, you know, this is my, this is my, I'm sorry for the crypto rug pull outfit. You know, I'm, I'm putting that one on for this. Like, I didn't realize, like, I didn't realize. I know I sold it immediately after it peaked, but I didn't realize that it was going to happen to all of you guys. Psych Ward, Connor would upload a video titled Yes, I'm Alive and I'm Sorry, in which he would state that the goodbye video was all an act, done for the purpose of potentially grabbing the attention of a movie studio. I had this crazy idea. I would make some acting reels that were so dramatic and so controversial that it would grab the attention of producers. And this would be my one final shot at becoming an actor in Los Angeles. However, at a later fuck? date, he'd gone to release the book that he'd been discussing in the original Goodbye video. I wrote a 70 page book in two days. In which he would state that he planned on replicating the path of Jesus by faking his death so more people could focus on his spiritual message. What if I uncovered the true knowledge and was able to spread it to the world? What if I thought up the most mind blowing YouTube stunt of all time to spread it? What if I could start to awaken other people and change the world? What if I could actually tell the modern day story of Jesus? I had some work to do before showing that the psych ward did little to bring him back to real i found eckhart toll's youtube channel i couldn't believe how many people watch it he had over 900k subscribers i had no idea his fan base was that big i had no idea his truth is spread to so many people by just checking out the comment section it was clear that many of his followers had awakened thank you for helping me with my spiritual awakening they'd say no of course there's no way to know for sure, if they were actually waking, but it didn't matter. It was enough motivation for me. What seemed like the unobtainable goal to that only devout Buddhist reach, I started to believe was actually possible. What if I could actually experience this? What if I could actually awaken? Reality, in another statement reading, I recently had what the doctors called a manic episode and I call a spiritual awakening. Okay, I admit, there might have been some mania involved, but I can promise you not an ounce of it was negative. Perhaps in his own mind, none of it was negative. However, his total subscriber graph told a different story. Since he began to lose his mind in 2020, Connor has lost over 150,000 subscribers and now- Oh yeah, I mean, that's the fucking main problem yeah <laughs> what do you mean dude oh no he lost subscribers bro he lost his mind what the fuck like <laughs> what the fuck dude what he, that is a sentence oh dude we are you know we are already in hell okay i i've because that's only a sentence that you will ever hear in hell his mind in 2000 However, his total subscriber graph told a different story. Since he began to lose his mind in 2020, Connor has lost over 150,000 subscribers. That's, that sentence is only something you can hear if you are already in hell. We are, we're already in hell. We, we already, we fucked up. God damn, he lost his mind, but also 
Let's look at the analytics. And now barely gains over a million views per month. He'd also mentioned in a recent video that he didn't have any money left. The moral of this story is that I'm broke. So if you have a business opportunity for me, maybe you want to help me get some brand deals and make some commission. At this point, I have zero shame and I'm open to pretty much anything. However, he does sound fairly sarcastic. So this might have been a joke. The silver lining to the story is that Connor has deleted almost all evidence of his crazy spiritual phase, replacing it with fitness content as he had posted in the past. His spiritual channel titled Connor Murphy Talk on which he used to post incoherent ramblings when completely silent until one month ago, at which point Connor returned with a normal articulate story relating to his high school days in which he's looking and sounding substantially healthier than he had been 12 months ago. Almost all of his comments discuss the obvious recent improvement in Connor's life, so hopefully his insanity was nothing more than a minor hiccup in what will become an incredibly successful life over the long term. That's crazy. Dude, what... What kind of content does this guy have? Like, this is like Juice World's final 27 hours. Push streamer who faked his wheelchair. Mr. B's brother didn't succeed. Why Mr. B's brother didn't succeed on YouTube? Sisters who faked their money. What the fuck? This is why you shouldn't work out? Wait, this is the guy I watched. This is the only JS guy. This is the video I watched, the uh, how only Jays became TikTok's most hated creator. And like the that's why we do Hassan positivity. In case no one told you this, your hair is looking extra thick today. Luscious locks, my friend. Thank you, Johnny Depp's sheets. Has PewDiePie lost the motivation for YouTube? Yes. Of course. Oh god, this is kind of sad, dude. This is like the graveyard of this is the graveyard of content creators and also literally like people who have died. Lil Xan deserves his failure. Speaking of please leak your hair care routine and products, please. They look so good now, Hustle. Um, nothing. 